to take you through a little uh, Pat Sullivan trivia test here. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to your Auburn days, first of all. Uh, most touchdown passes in a season? Uh, you mean how many? Yeah, how many? Uh, I, I don't know, what, 26, 7, something like that? Well, now the record says 20. Okay, it may have been. 1971, yeah, senior year. Okay. okay. Well, you failed so far this test. Okay. Uh, touchdown, how many touchdown passes in your career? Uh, passes or? Passes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a long time ago. 53, <laughs> I think. 53, you are right. Tied with Stan White, I think. Okay. Uh, still the, the leader at the, in Auburn history. Uh, do you know how many uh, total passing yards you had in your career? I got really no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, you don't live in the past, and that's You're a good right. thing. Pat. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Let's do walk down memory lane just okay. a second, though. Uh, let's relive those Auburn days. The, you know, I grew up in Arkansas, Pat. Right. So I, at the time, I was more attuned to the Southwest Conference, sure. Texas, Arkansas. Right. But I knew about the SEC simply because Pat Sullivan and Archie Manning. Right. Those two guys, such national names at that time. So I knew about the SEC. Right. Take me through your Auburn career. I mean, only three years at that time. Well, it, it was back then. Of course, you know, freshmen didn't. You know, were not eligible to play. We played a, a you know, a, a freshman schedule, so to speak. Played five games, I believe. Uh, then, you know, as sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Well, actually, our schedule then was only a ten-game schedule. So, you know, we we played ten games at that time, but. You know, it, it was it was such a, a great era, different. Uh, obviously, it was special to us in that, uh, you know, we had some good football teams, won a lot of games, and, yeah. and played in a lot of venues. But, you know, one, to tell you how different it is, is uh, I remember my senior year, uh, the next to last game of the year, we played Georgia over in Athens. Uh, they were like fourth in the nation. We were fifth, both of us undefeated. Only time in the history of the school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on TV. You know, it, you only had the, the one ABC game of the week, and, right. and we were not the ABC game of the week. So, you know, that just shows you how, how far things have come. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, when you went through the recruiting processes that you did, you knew a lot of the players, you know, on other teams. And, of course, you mentioned Archie. And, uh, you know, we actually played against each other uh, in the uh, uh, Gator Bowl in 1971, mm -hmm. January 2nd. And, developed a, a relationship that uh, we still carry on today and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably talk once every uh, month or six weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, All-American, you're All-American all as your junior year, so that's, the, I guess your legend kind of began your junior season, started developing, and then that, that senior year, let's go through that Heisman campaign, and how did that start building, Pat? Well, uh, again, it, it was different uh, back then than what it is today because there was not, you know, all the Heisman watches and the various things, but, uh, if I'm not mistaken, my junior year, I finished, you know, fourth or fifth, which was the, the highest of any junior coming back. So, obviously, you know, going in, you know, you were, you know, one of the, quote, favorites. And, and it was something that Coach Jordan and I uh, sat down and talked about. And we said, let's just, you know, let's just play. And if there's an award that's meant to be, it's meant to be. And uh, fortunately, we had a good football team. And, uh, you know, as far as running up the scores and stuff like that and playing the stats, there were probably five or six games that year that I maybe played one series in the second half and then came out because we were, we were leading. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we were playing, and, and I think that's something that's uh, maybe not, uh, not the same now. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes that, you know, the Heisman and what it means to, you know, schools and conferences and players, uh, a lot of times they, they play guys a little longer than, than maybe they, they, they would in normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. When you won the Heisman, who were, who were the other, say, top two contenders with you? Well, uh, there was a guy by the name of Ed Marinero uh, yeah, from sure. Cornell. Cornell. He, he finished second. Uh, Greg Pruitt uh, from uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Johnny Musso from Alabama was, was involved. Uh, those pretty were good some, draft. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good company to be in. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised to win, or, or did you feel like at the time that okay, I'm kind of favored? Right? Well, you know, we again we had had a we had had a good year, and uh, I mentioned the Georgia game earlier, and that was uh, the actually the announcement back then was made at, uh, on Thanksgiving night uh, at the halftime of the Georgia Georgia Tech game, and we had played Georgia the week before, and. Fortunately, had a you know a good game and we had won that and you know there was a lot of national media that uh, you know covered that game and so uh, you know it was you know you were you were kind of the favorite but I I think at that time uh, even though there wasn't all the media that the exposure that there is I don't think there could have been any more demands on, on my time because you know starting in the summertime 
you know, just every day there was, a, you know, some kind of media request and things. You went to the gas station or the class or whatever, you know, that was something that everybody brought up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there wasn't a big campaign by Auburn. Buddy Davidson, our, our sports information director, did such a wonderful job. And he put out one little two-page two pamphlet, you know, just of the stats. And, uh, but I remember all the extra work that Buddy put in. And, you know, when it came time for the announcement, I was ready for it to be over with one way or the other. You know, it, you, there comes a time that there needs to be a climax to something. And it was that time. And, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, I won. And one of the things, one of my fondest memories uh, of, in athletics is the Heisman winners today don't get to experience. And that, as I mentioned, it was announced at halftime of the Georgia Georgia Tech game on a Thursday night. Immediately after that, and I saw it on TV, just like everybody else, we were not in New York. And so I was able to go to the football office and share that with my teammates, coaches, and, and you know, the quote, Auburn family. And, you know, that was a, an experience like being in a locker room after a big game. And, you know, it was something that, uh, you know, we all shared. And I knew I won it because of them. It was not a one-man deal. And so that's something that I'll always cherish. That's, that's neat. Before we leave the Auburn days, mm -hmm. uh, I want to hear your thoughts about when you think back on those days, your best game, your best memory out of that junior-senior season. You know, uh, I don't know. We, we were fortunate that we, we played in a lot and had a lot of good games. Uh, you know, we, we went to Florida uh, our junior year, and again, as a team, we, you know, it was their homecoming, and you know, I think we beat them 63-7 to seven or something like that, and that was, you know, that's kind of uh, unheard of. And I think you had over 400 yards passing in that game. Yeah, uh, something Somewhere I don't know. It, it was good. I know Terry ran wild. And, <laughs> and, uh, but then, uh, you know, probably a special game was – uh, my junior year when we played Alabama here in Birmingham, we had had some people hurt and they jump off 17 to nothing and then we come back and close it right before half and, and then, uh, you know, it was just back and forth in the, in the third and fourth quarter and we finally won it at the end. So, you know, those are kind of some that stick out and, and uh, obviously the Georgia game over in Athens uh, that probably, quotes clinched the Heisman. That was, that was a good one. You mentioned Terry. Uh, you and Terry Beasley will forever be linked uh, in the history of Auburn football. Right. I mean, well, you know, uh, Terry was, you know, he was an outstanding player. Uh, he was probably ahead of his time athletically. He could really run. But I think Terry would be the first to tell you, as, as I will, that, you know, it wasn't just T and I. It was, uh, you know, Dick Smoltz and Alvin Bressler and, you know, all the running backs that we had. And it, it was a team thing. And, uh, so, but we were, we were at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Suge Jordan, your coach, legendary Auburn coach. Oh, yeah. Give me some Suge memories. Oh, gosh, there's, there's, <laughs> there's so many, uh, you know, but, you know, what a, what a special guy. Uh, you know, I, I won't ever forget we played uh, the Blue Bonnet Bowl in 69, and you wanted a, a humorous story <laughs> or something that you remember. Uh, they had a great team. They had lost, uh, we played Houston out, out there, and they had lost their first game, and then they'd come on and just blown everybody out. And so we're playing, and uh, we hadn't been across midfield, uh, but I think maybe one time about the middle of the third quarter. And so uh, we got down to about their 30-yard line, and uh, it was fourth and two, and Coach Jordan sent the punter in, and, you know, I sent him back out. <laughs> called to play and we went for it of course you know what happened we didn't make it yeah. uh -huh. and so uh, you know everybody thought coach Jordan was that southern gentleman uh -huh. and uh, you know I was, went over to the sideline and as I was going he met me you know about the sideline and put his arm around my neck and I'm sure from the stands it looked like he was consoling me but uh, you know I can assure you that his arm was getting this like a vice getting around my <laughs> neck and he told me in no uncertain terms to go sit on that bench and not get up till the game was over and uh, so I did I, I didn't ever cross coach Jordan again <laughs> <laughs> Pat did you call your own plays how, how did that work yeah you know we we did back then you know you uh, we probably called um, you know, 75, 80 percent of our, our own plays, and it was something that you worked with with the coaches, and uh, you know, it was uh, we, but we did that. It, it, it was fun. Coaching um, after Auburn, uh, you go to the NFL a few years with the Atlanta Falcons. Right. Um, did you always have coaching in mind? Or not? You know, I, I I did, and you know, the most important thing to me, and 
uh, has been is my family and Jean, my wife, she's been my partner. We were married in school and she's been my partner through all this. But uh, <clears throat> about five or six years, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, out of playing ball, I was coaching my kids in, in uh, you know, youth football and soccer and stuff. And uh, I was in the insurance business. She was in the real estate business. We were both doing well, thank goodness. And uh, but I was also doing the radio broadcast for, for Auburn. And, uh, you know, she came to me in uh, that, that summer of, of 85, I think. And she said, you know, the happiest uh, that I see you is on Saturday morning when you're getting up and going to a game or when you're coaching the kids. And she said, you ought to go into coaching and uh, not wake up when you're 50 years old and not be doing what you want to do. I said, are you sure? <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes if you ask for something, you get, for, you get what you mm -hmm. ask for. But uh, anyway, uh, it, we made that decision about middle of the year to try to get involved. And fortunately, there was an open at Auburn, uh, you know, after that, that season. And, uh, you know, the timing was right. And, and so I went there. And I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, you know, coaching. Coached at Auburn as an assistant several years, then right. take over as head coach at TCU. Right. Had good success at TCU. Well, we did, and you know, everywhere I've been very fortunate. Uh, you know, at at Auburn, uh, at the six years that that we were there, we won three conference championships in a row, which was, you know, a nice run that we had, and had a chance to coach some really good players. And then with the TCU, when they were really down, uh, not like what you you see them today, and. Uh, in fact, that first spring we only had like uh, 57 players. I remember for for our first spring practice, and and uh, they were just coming off the probation period that that they had gone through. And, but after three years, we had uh, you know uh, shared in the conference championship. And, you know, the conference broke up, and uh, you know I was involved in a couple of jobs, and it really hurt us a, a little bit in recruiting. And, and then uh, you know we turned it around after that, and. Uh, the last year that we were there, we had 38 of our 62 that dressed out were, were uh, freshmen or redshirt freshmen. And there was a lot of good players in that group. Uh, LaDainian Tomlinson's one that people remember now, and uh, the Schobel brothers, uh, they were good players. And I think there were like 17 or 18 draft choices out of that, that 38. So, you know, I knew it was on, on solid ground, and I was proud of what we did. Mm -hmm. Left there after '97, I think. I guess set out a year or two before. I, well, I, I did. I, I was I was worn out, yeah. and uh, you know I, I I came back to Birmingham, and which is our hometown, and uh, you know was just kind of just uh, stayed away for about two months, and then you know when the the grass started uh, turning and oh. you know fall and everything, I, UAB. I went down and watched some of their practices, and then. You know, as, as fate had it at the end of that year, there was opening on that staff. And so, uh, you know, it was natural to, to be able to stay here in Birmingham and, and uh, to, to be able to, to coach there and really enjoyed that. And, and uh, then, uh, you know, with Watson and the staff, we did some good things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then this, this past December had an opportunity to come here to Sanford. And so was the, the desire to to become the head coach again, was that always there while you were assisting at UAB? Yeah, I think it was. And, uh, you know, as you're aware, and we mentioned, you know, about three and a half years ago, I had a bout with cancer. And, you know, at, at, at that time, you're just, uh, you know, you just hope to get up the next morning. And uh, so, but after, you know, I got through that situation, and yeah, I, I, I was really kind of itching to, to you know, uh, get, get my hands on, on another team. and. You know, this was just the perfect situation for us. And that uh, at my stage in life, uh, Gene and I, we've got seven grandchildren, three children, and uh, all, grand, all the grandchildren live about two miles down the road, and we live about three miles over the hill. And <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's when I get up in, in the morning, come over the hill to come to work, I, I really just kind of pinch myself and uh, feel so fortunate. And as we talked earlier, now head coach at Sanford University, a school right. where your dad played football back in the 1950s. I guess. Well, actually, it was 1949. 49. It was it was the okay. it was the old Howard College, and uh, uh, the, on the first team that they had after the war. In fact, he and Coach Bowden, Bobby Bowden, uh, they were mm -hmm. they were teammates together and and played. And uh, I think Daddy played one year, and then. I came along, and so he had to give it up and go to work. And mm -hmm. of course, Coach Bowden kept playing and coaching, and uh, you know the rest is history. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about lessons in life from sports, from right. athletics. Uh, 
What do you take, Pat? I mean, you're still in oh, this game. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's real simple, uh, you know, uh, and I tell the kids, and you know, what you get out of athletics, when it's all said and done, it's not the Heisman, it's not the awards. It's the relationships that are, are life-lasting. And, uh, you know, it's just like when I was sick. Uh, you know, there were so many uh, of teammates, you know, competitors, you know, that, that uh, stayed in touch and meant so much. And I'll, t I'll share one story with you. It was, it was one of our low days. And, uh, you know, things were not good. And Gene kept a, a log of who called. And at the, the end of the day, you know, we'd kind of recap. And, I won't ever forget one day, like I said, it was, a, it was a low day, and you mentioned Archie. Archie had called, Jim Plunkett had called, Steve Owens had called, I think Beasley and Musso. Ray Perkins used to call me all the time. Uh, Dick Smalls, another teammate, and, and uh, I, if I mentioned Steve Owens, I don't remember, but when we got through, Jim Plunkett had called, and, and uh, when, when we were sitting there talking that night, she said, you know, she said, uh, you could have had a pretty good football team with, with, with that. And I said, yeah, but we couldn't have played but one or two plays. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the relationships is what's, it's, it's what carries you.